I'm Dr. Shamanita Blanche, ex-corporate and academia girl, turned CEO and board member of several companies and mother of four little extraordinary kids. But it wasn't that long ago that I lacked the confidence, the know-how and the time to focus on designing and really going after the life that I so wanted to live. A life of freedom, of fairness and of being fair dinkum to who I really was and what I wanted to get out of this fleeting time that we have on Mother Earth. Fast forward to many lessons learned and moving halfway around the world to the most amazing country, you'll see the life that I now live. One that gives me more safety and freedom than I ever thought would be possible and that really only existed as a daydream while I was living in South Africa. I created Chamonix TV to give you true spot advice on how you can also live a life in this amazing country and so that you can see how another couple like us now live in Australia with four little kids here in Down Under and I'll be providing you with step by step strategies so that you can make your Aussie dream a reality too. If you're a keen future Aussie who's looking to create a life that excites you and offers you safety, freedom and opportunity, you have come to the right place my friend. Welcome aboard. Hi Bernadette, how are you? It's so lovely to see you on the other side of the screen with your smiley face. <laughs> Hey, how are you doing? I'm very good, thank you. It's been a wonderful day today. Busy, busy, but um, now I have the lovely opportunity to grab a cuppa with you and hear all about your interesting story of moving go. to Australia. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> if you don't mind introducing yourself to our audience, please, Benedette. Yes, um, I'm Benedette Schuch. Um, from Reaches Bay, I'm in Pungeni area. We moved to Perth about eight years ago and absolutely love it. Good. Why do you love it so much here? Oh, look, it's, um, we've got three beautiful boys and um, just for education, a better education for them and just having a better lifestyle, we made it the big decision for them. So it's and great. How, how old are they now? So you've got an 11 year old, a nine year old, and eight. So they were all born, <laughs> born when you moved India. Here? Yes. So when we had only the second one, so we only had two when we decided to come over. And funny enough, we were in the process and we were just about the end of the process. And um, I found out I was pregnant. And I was like, Australia is going to be like, no, you guys need to stay where you are. And I must say, they were amazing. They opened us with open arms and they were like, you know what, just come over. It's all good. What is, it's just another number. And we were like, really, we were grateful. So, oh, that's awesome. Um, yeah, I just had to stay in South Africa until um, baby was born. And then we, they flew us over. So what visa did you guys apply for? 457. Four, five, seven. And is that yeah. on your husband's skill? Yes. So he was a boiler maker by trade when we come mm -hmm. came over. And um, that's how amazing this place is. They actually, he has got now more trades where he's um, got fitting and he's an operator. So, which is not possible in South Africa. <laughs> that's amazing. So when did he change so he was um, probably two years ago, they sent him for his fitting. Um, they put him through all the courses and um, they just had faith in him. And um, during the COVID stage now, they, he went to a new job and they put him through the whole operating. So he went through all the tests and stuff and it's still continuing. It's still That's continuing. That's amazing. Wow. Yeah. How fortunate are you guys? And you say that you told me a little bit earlier, he's left today to go for his job. He's a FIFO worker. Is that right? Yeah, he's, um, he's currently a FIFO worker. So he works two one rosters. So that means he's two weeks away from home and then he comes home for a week, um, which it goes by so fast, um, which most people do over here. Um, but you just fit into it, you know, um, and there's so much to do. So it's not like, you miss each other in that time. You miss each other in a way of you wish the person was here. Yeah. But um, it's just a great opportunity 
he travels and everything so uh, just so that our viewers know, FIFO is fly in, fly out. It's the short um, <laughs> slang that I we use. I know. Here. Every time I talk to someone in South Africa, they're like, what is FIFO? <laughs> and I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> we don't have that there, do you? <laughs> yes, yeah, so this is a big country. If you work on a mine site, you've got to fly there. And uh, you sometimes fly really far. So does he yeah. work in WA? Is that the FIFO job does. in WA? Yeah, he's in Newman. Yeah. Right. Okay. So yeah. two weeks there and then one week at home. What does he do? When, what do you guys do as a family when he's at home? What's your typical kind of schedule? Obviously the boys go to school <laughs> normally. Yeah. So um, when the boys are at school, we'll spend our time together. Cause I mean, um, we try, I've got my a little beauty business that I do. So um, I deal with my clients in the morning and at, um, at night time and then during the day we go for breakfast or we go take walks or go do shopping and spend some money. <laughs> um, just, yeah, we just do whatever we can, but the day goes by so quickly, you yeah. know, they, you can only do as much as you can. Yeah. Yeah. Are you guys far <laughs> away from the ocean or do you live near the beach? We actually have a park so we can go to, um, yeah. We're in Heaven Park area. Which, is, so really which is about 10 minutes from the beach, I'd say. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I don't yes, know that so the road from me, by the way. <laughs> I knew that. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> um, um, a funny story. So when we just moved over, we went to Coles and we ran into your mum, a beautiful lady, and she was having a... <laughs> so the funny thing is when you talk to South Africans over here, um, you tend to not talk Afrikaans. So that people don't, don't know that you're from South Africa. <laughs> and we went to Coles the one day and one of the boys were really naughty and we were like, stop it. <laughs> and your mom walked past and she's like, yes, it's really hot, isn't it? And we first started laughing. You know, like every shop you go to, you're so scared that the next person is going to be South African. <laughs> and you need to be careful what you say sometimes. Yes, that's right. There are a lot of South Africans here, Afrikaans-speaking people. And um, you can spot them a mile away because they think <laughs> you know, nobody understands them. So they talk really loud. And you can be three yeah. miles away and you can hear that Afrikaans right over everything. It echoes <laughs> down. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Dear. Hey. Oh, oh, yeah. My mum has um, w walked up to many South Africans just <laughs> starting to talk to them because, you know, that's what you do. If you hear something that sounds familiar and sounds like home, uh, yeah, you, sure. you tend to, to gravitate to that and, and basically, yeah. Keys, yeah, just hear how you're going. So I'm glad that my mum bumped into you. And now that I'm <laughs> able to have, have a chat with you a few years later and, um, yes. and learn right. more about your journey. <laughs> so tell me, Benedict, you said earlier that you've got your own beauty business. What do you actually do? What does that entail? So I've got beauty products, health products and everything that we, um, what I, so basically like I share, we don't literally sell it, we share our products. So um, whatever we results we get, we'll share with our customers. Um, can't really say the name of the company because that's not how they trade. But I mean, more than welcome if people are interested to give me a, a personal message or whatever. And is that something that you did in South Africa as well? Or did you start that recently? Or no. how did you do this? So... Um, I had a girlfriend and she came up to me two years ago and she's like, oh, do you know Territory Spelling? And I'm like, oh yeah, I used to watch Nardo Stevely, I was Nardo to one, I, I loved it. And um, she was like, oh, I'm in business with them. And I'm like, no, you're not. <laughs> and um, yeah, she sold me a toothpaste and it went viral. It's so popular. So I jumped on board and um, been using the products for two years and it's absolutely amazing. So I love the beauty, the, the product, um, what I'm doing. So previously I've been in other companies doing stuff and it just was never successful. So going into this, I was really scared. I was like, it's going to be another failure. Um, but once you test it, you know the results are true. And that mm. is when you share it. That's great. So you can work your work life around your family life and see your boys when they come back from school and 
spend the, the week off with your hubby, basically. It is. I mean, I, I was working since 2013 when we got here. So I, I literally did works for Western Power okay. and um, missed school assemblies or, you know, um, first days of schools and stuff like that. So I'm really blessed with what I'm doing now, being able to be there. I know it's a little bit too late, but yeah. being able there to be for my kids. That's great. Yes. Well done. And tell me about the thing that you find the hardest in Australia or what annoys you the most? The trolleys. Oh, yes. My <laughs> goodness. <laughs> They're horrible. <laughs> when we just got you, I was like, where are we going? No, it's, it's, um, <laughs> it's really horrible. But, but I must say, I don't find anything really annoying. I feel that every day that I'm here, I'm really blessed. Um, I don't know how it was with you guys, but we are still in the phase of locking doors and everything needs to be locked in a certain amount of hours, but we're getting slowly out of that. So, I... <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I, I do agree with you. Um, we are probably more cautious than what we need to be in, in, in our household. Mm. I still wake up with nightmares where I find that, I, I'm dreaming about people trying to murder me in South Africa. So I still have that really angst about what happened back at home. And for me here, I, I struggle to shake that. So I keep on checking that the doors are locked. When I'm driving, I do still find myself looking over my shoulder without even realizing, you know, to just to see when I yeah. go to a traffic light, whether there's, you know, any shaky people around, dodgy people. And then I realized I don't really have to do that. So yeah, I might as well just enjoy the ride and relax. Um, so I yes, think if yeah. something traumatic happened to you, it tend because I'm, for example, scared of the dark. So when I was back home, my sister and I, we were probably in year seven and we walked from church to home and it was really not that far. And we were mugged. I mean, I had a gun against my head. So um, I'm still today. I'm scared of the dark. If I have to take the bins out, I'm like, I asked one of my kids to go with me. That's yeah. how scared I am. Yes. You know, oh, it's, it's unfortunate that we have to live with that trauma and that yeah. mental trauma, which nobody really deserves or should need no. to live with. Which is why it's so wonderful that we now have this opportunity to be here and we're trying to help other South Africans make the move here too. So if you have any advice or somebody said to you in South Africa, oh, Benedict, I'm considering making the move to Australia, but I'm not sure. What would you tell them? I would say, why well, think about it? Just get it done. Come over. I mean, to think about your safety and your health, wouldn't you rather want to be in a place where you know you're safe, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, I feel sorry for people that that's still over there. I tried, my dad wants to come over. He literally wants to come over, but he can't. He mm. had, he wants an opportunity to come, but then you've got people over there that's got the opportunity to come, but they just don't want to take it. And yeah. it's really, I know some people say, look, um, we've got family, we've got kids there, but you know what? You need to think about yourself. You need to think about, um, what could happen back there, you know? Yeah, yeah. Australia have got a great opportunity, you know, um, work-wise. You know, they look, they look, Australia looks after mm. their people, you know, that's and true. that's where you want to be. Yes, we'll just get them to fix the trolleys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll do that one. Eh? Just like an FRR there. <laughs> we'll just send the letter off. But um, education-wise, you know, I could not imagine being in South Africa with my kids going to school there. You know, mm. I know they've got a better life over here. And yeah. that's what any parent wants for their kids. Yeah, and even absolutely. if you don't have kids, you know, people get old. You need to think about your olden days, you know, and that is yeah. why it's so important. Yes, look forward, not backwards. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And there, it's not going to happen. If I look, you know, we had the opportunity when I was in school to come over, which my parents never took. They never took it. And my husband's the same. They had an opportunity to come, but they never took it. 
we came over, my parents again had an opportunity and they didn't take it. Now they wanted to come over and it's too late because of the age. Oh, so sad. Don't wait on your decisions. Do it now if you can. Don't because your age, you grow older, you don't grow younger. Yeah. You grow older. yeah, that's the thing. Australia don't really allow, except for a parental visa, but then there are some other rules around it as well. If you're over yeah. a certain age, you can't. And generally 45 is the general skilled migration age cutoff for, for most categories. Um, then oh. you can't come in anymore. So sadly, as you say, some people just leave it until it's too late and then it, it literally is too late and then you can't come anymore. So I, I agree, you know, just, just grab, anything any opportunity that you can go and look for it and then grab it with both hands and come over and if you don't enjoy it go back you know there's nothing stopping you from going back 100 percent. but you know when we came over we had people that worked with my husband right and um the guy the one day is like oh no he's going back to south africa my husband's like why he's like oh yeah i just yeah i don't get it and he's like mate you've got a son and a wife. So you want to go back to a country where it's unsafe for them because you can't get a job. It's being selfish. There's yeah. people back home that wants to come over to Australia, but they can't. You've got an opportunity of being in Australia and you yeah. being selfish because you want to go back. Yeah. True as Bob, they went back home a month yeah. later, they emailed us, please help us come over again. And we were like, we'll try, but it's not wow. going to be easy. Yeah. Wow. Are they still there so, now or, or did they make it they back here? They stuck there. They still oh. stuck there. And still now with coronavirus, nobody goes anywhere anyway. So it's so hard. And how thankful am I that we're in Australia? Well, Western Australia for that matter, yes. because we have very low, if any, uh, COVID numbers in, in, the, in the community. A hundred percent. You know, I'm so grateful that we don't have high numbers. You know, Mm. everything was just, everything was planned well. We were looked Mm. after really well, you know. Yeah, yeah. And keeping the borders shut, you know, that is just a clever move. Yeah. Look at every other country. Yes, yes. Uh, (laughs) South Africa was a bit later than Australia to start with the COVID numbers. But um, when when it started, it it, it really took off like a, a fire. Tell me, Benedict, when the borders open again, would you be rushing to go and visit South Africa? I look, to be really honest with you, we, um, my kids haven't been back home. We um, would never take them over. Reason being, we know people that went over to go visit and they didn't make it back. So we will not risk Mm -hmm. taking our kids back home i mean look i really want my kids to know south africa i want to see i want them to meet my family you know and my parents are there um i want them to get to know their cousins but risking my family taking them back home not knowing if they can get killed that same day i will never in my life risk that not as a no yeah well imagine if something happens you won't be able to live with yourself for the rest of your life that's if that's if you make it through if you yeah exactly so okay so you haven't been back is there anything specifically that you do miss of south africa like food wise or anything that you could sort of if you could ask somebody to bring it for you what would that be oh you know that knickknacks the chips (laughs) i'm craving that like forever and um (laughs) My husband's been asking for that um, Penutro um, porridge. Um, yeah. I think it's the original of banana or something. So there's, there's, the South African shops can't have it over here. And he's like, if we go back, we'll, we'll go and get a wimpy and we'll go. Get... <laughs> <laughs> it's so, yeah, funny we'll how people crave that. something like wimpy burgers. They don't go for something like smart. It's always like the wimpy <laughs> or the spur or something Wimpy really basic. <laughs> <laughs> but no, look, um, I've been back in 2013. So when we came over in 2012, I missed home. I missed my mom because my mom and I are very close. Um, we used to see each other every day and not being able to see my mom was the hardest thing for me. Um, so I went back in 2013 because my husband's like, look, I'll send you back, 
alone. And then when you come back, you tell me what you want to do. I went back and I just landed there. And I just, I had fear. Since we I stopped there, I got out of the plane. I had this fear in me, mm. which is not normal for a person. You shouldn't be feeling like that mm. in your own country. Mm. You know? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah, look, I went to go visit. It was really nice. There was no... Um, it wasn't uncomfortable. There was no breaking stuff. There was gunshots every night, but that was okay. You know, I could live with that. <laughs> but um, just getting back home, I was, I said to my husband, never again, yeah. never again, just going to bed and you don't know what's going to happen that night mm. because of all the stories and mm. it's, yeah, it's just stressful. So when you moved here the, initially, how did you make friends? How did you settle into the community? Well, luckily, um, so obviously with um, Hubby's work, we tended to, because just there was a, four South Africans that came over together. So we were like, okay, we are family now. So we stick together. So we literally, the wives used like every day, because I had a three-month-old, you know, I had three kids alone. So Hubby working, I had to like tent with all three boys. So that was hard work by itself. You know, there was yeah. no help. So um, I had these wonderful ladies helping me and we grew to be a family. Um, but when we came over the first time, we went to Queensland. Oh, yeah. And yeah, and I was like, okay, but it was still, there was no family. So mm. we came over December and we visited my mom in, um, she stayed in success at the time. And um, we fell in love with Perth. We fell in love as soon as we drove in. We were like, wow, like this is beautiful. And um, my husband's boss at, in Queensland was a South African and he was beautiful. He, my husband went to him and said, look, we want to go to my parents. He said, 100%, I'll support mm -hmm. you. They helped us, even though we want a visa, they helped us to come over to Perth. You know, they didn't charge us anything mm. or nothing because their importance was being surrounded with family. They That's knew we right. were ha having three boys, you know, and me alone. We needed to be with family. Mm. So they were supportive 100%. That's so awesome. we moved over to um, my in-laws in um, 2013 in Feb and haven't left Perth ever since. How great. Yeah, it's a wonderful place. I do. I do enjoy Perth. We also lived in Brisbane for a couple of years and enjoyed it a lot there, but moved back because my family is in Perth and, and I didn't move halfway around the world to be on the other side of the island of where my parents are. So, so yes, we moved back to Perth and now it's like we're, we're so close to each other. We're like five minutes drive this way to go to my brother and his family or this way to my parents and, <laughs> We're, we see each other more now than we ever used to see each other in South Africa when we left school, obviously. So, yeah. yes, Australia has been really good for us in that sense. Um, the, the last thing I was wondering is uh, why did you choose Australia and not go to somewhere like New Zealand or Canada, Bernadette? Um, so even when I was in school, I just loved Australia. I don't know for what reason, though. But Australia has always been beautiful to me, you know, whether it was going to be Sydney or wherever. I just always wanted to be in Australia. Um, I don't know Canada, New Zealand, um, I've heard about, but all the earthquakes and stuff like that, I don't want to be surrounded by that, you know. Mm. Um, yeah, so I think it was just a thing of we're going to Australia. <laughs> so we were applied for the at this stage. <laughs> so when you applied for your visa it was a straightforward process did you do it yourself or did you use an agent no we did it ourselves so we um literally got in contact with friends that we knew an uncle we knew in gladstone um surprisingly and we believe whatever is meant to be will happen so yeah. we sent a resume i think i know it was a weekend the Monday my husband got a call, like everything wow. happened so fast. I mean, before we knew we had like our visas were granted, we sold everything at our house. I was like, all right, everything is sold. So what happens if we're not going to Australia? <laughs> but you know what? We, we ended up coming. It was just yeah. meant to be that we had to be here. 
It was yeah. literally so fast. Everything happened quick. So he got the job first and then the company applied on his behalf to sponsor him over. Is that right? Yes. So they did everything. So he applied, um, they did like the interview, everything. And then they put the whole process through. Uh, we went through their agents. Amazing. And um, they were in contact with us. They told us what the next steps were going to be. There was a lot of communication. Um, we didn't have to wait for anything. Um, so everyone from both sides was on top of it the whole time. Awesome. That's why everything went so quick. Yes. Wow. So how quick did you say from when you started applying until you got granted the visa? So obviously, because I felt pregnant, we had to wait the nine oh, months yeah. Yeah. <laughs> longer. But I guess we would have been probably, um, probably took like six months or something. Wow. You know, yeah. that's how quick it was. Yes. Um, and you know, it was, it was still funny. Like when we got that email to say that we going to Australia, I first started crying because it became reality. Like it's mm. actually happening. It was more joy than sadness, I think, to know that we were going to be in a safer country with the boys. And yeah. yeah, it was just very exciting. And what did you pack? Everything or nothing or oh, something? We, we packed everything because we were unsure. <laughs> so I remember we went and bought five cents of baby formula. We like, I literally took my clothes and I rolled it up and like literally rolled it up and put it in the bags on top of each other, squished it. We, <laughs> we, it, so just the FYI for people coming over, don't watch that border security because that is just one lie. We watched that and we were in fear coming over because we were expecting the worst. <laughs> and uh, people were telling us, oh, you know, they're really strict with parents and kids. You know, if you like, just hit your kid just like that, you'll get into trouble. <laughs> and um, we went, I think we went on three flights and we came in Sydney. And um, the, we had the boys on the trolley and we had four bags. So my husband was literally, I had the baby on top of me. I had two bags. We had the two little ones. My husband was still having two bags with them and we put them on the trolley. And when we were unpacking the bags, um, the trolley fell over. So the boys and the chief fell and we were both like standing there exhausted. We were like, <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh dear the, lady, the lady just looked and she's like, guys, we know you're tired. Just, don't worry about it. I was like, oh my goodness. <laughs> um, yeah, it was, it was funny. It was really funny. We came with literally everything. Would you pack everything again? Or what would you say? What's your advice in terms no. of what to leave and what to bring? Oh, you know what furniture? I wouldn't, we didn't bring furniture. We got everything. I know it's funny when you hear this, like South Africans laugh a lot, but we literally got our way. We filled our house up with stuff aside on the road. I mean, people put out stuff that's literally brand new. Nothing wrong with it. Yeah. And you can, as the time goes by, you can just replace it with new, you know, yes. yeah. and you don't have to have luxury in your house. Yeah. I mean, the first, first year, probably, you know, I would be like, just live off what you've got. Yeah. Um, clothes is enough. Just bring, and you don't have to bring a lot of clothes, because I mean we have beautiful stores here, and they're not yeah. expensive, not at you all. You just need to know where to buy. That's the thing. In exactly. Australia, you can shop a bargain. You just need to know what to do and where to look for. There's always a sale somewhere. There is. You just have to. If you like shopping, you'll go find it. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> Well, Benedict, it's been fabulous talking to you. Thanks so much for your time and for sharing your really positive and uplifting story with, uh, with everybody who's listening. We oh, appreciate your time. It's been Thank absolutely fabulous. Thank you for fabulous. the lovely chat. <laughs> it's my pleasure. And um, I'll, I'll grab you for a coffee soon enough because you're just down yeah, the road definitely. from me. <laughs> with, with all our boys, your yeah. three and my three boys plus my one girl. So we'll have, what's the math? We'll oh, have seven I'm... kids. <laughs> Oh, that would be, we, we should organize that definitely. <laughs>
<laughs> oh, a lovely. coffee date. <laughs> yes, yes, somewhere where there's not too many other people who don't like kids, eh? <laughs> <laughs> well, fun um, spot. <laughs> luckily in Australia, it's very child friendly, so uh, oh, it, it, it shouldn't be an issue. Enjoy your weekend and go and those boys and give them a big hug. I oh, will. Thanks, lovely. Thanks, Bye. Bye. <laughs> All right. So thank you so much for joining me today. If you had fun, please remember to hit that subscribe button, and then it'll make sure that you never miss a thing. I'll see you same time and same place next week. Bye for now.